This conference will now be recorded. Uh, yes, uh, good morning to everyone. Yeah. So before going to this demo session, I request all of you, if you have any sort of the question, you can interrupt me and you can ask a question, offline student. Uh, online student, if you have any question, you can unmute your mic or you can drop a message in the chat box so that I'll check the chat box, then I can answer to your questions. Okay. Uh, so let us start with the demo session. First of all, I welcome you all for this demo session. Uh, myself, Chetan. Okay. I have three plus years of experience on embedded and uh, IoT. I'll be the trainer for this embedded uh, and uh, IoT, embedded system and IoT. Uh, hello, today, sir. like, uh, yeah, hello. Sorry, I'm audible. Sir, my yeah. record chase code and key access over to concern and to my friends key share chair and key introduction. So, all agree that I'll go to join out. Yes, yes, but sir. Is possible, uh, possible, Kale the Walk in the country Zoom item yeah, under yeah. ready counter, but me read it a platform or connect just narrow. So, okay, are the possible overlay the Walk here? No, no, I'll let you know regarding this session. Okay, uh, I am recording this session. Okay, after this session, we'll download this uh, video and then we'll share the link to you. So there's okay, nothing okay. to worry. Okay, okay we'll so be sharing you. the recorded uh, video to you. Okay. 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 Let us start with the uh, demo of overview on embedded system and uh, IoT. So nowadays, you may see about. Uh, Internet of Things, uh, there is a remarkable growth in uh, recent years where almost all the standalone systems or embedded systems are connected to Internet. Uh, you may have about news that uh, you are staying in the office and you can turn off your TV or a, uh, whatever home appliances in the remote location. So basically that can be done through the image system will be incorporated with the Internet of Things. Okay. So the remarkable growth nowadays you can see on the Internet of Things. Uh, today, uh, my plan is like I will be going with the overview of uh, embedded system training and uh, IoT training. Okay. Uh, like first we'll see. Uh, let me introduce about uh, VLSI Guru. What VLSI Guru? Uh, what kind of training basically we will uh, give to the candidates, uh, students who are uh, seeking job. Uh, VLSI Guru is a uh, premier uh, training institute where we will give the training in three domains, VLSI domain and uh, embedded domain and IoT. So you know that VLSI stands for uh, very large scale integrated circuit. A large number of components are uh, putting into the tiny space in the small space uh, using silicon uh, technology. You may see that Almost all digital systems are using work on VLSI. In the small chip, you are able to accommodate uh, more components inside the chip to work with various operations. So if you talk about VLSI, in VLSI, we'll be having uh, two domains. One is front-end domain, another one is back-end domain. In the front-end domain, we'll be giving you ASCII flow, like very large system, very large UVM, and then RTL integration course. And then DFT course. If you're coming to the back end, we'll be providing, uh, giving a training on uh, physical domain, physical design, and physical verification and static timing analysis. So, various course and back end will be providing. So, this is on VLSI. You are interested, you are seeking a job in chip design. They can go with the VLSI for both the front end and back end. This was the training is given in the VLSI. Apart from this, so we'll be also giving training on uh, embedded system. So embedded, what is embedded system? What are the devices you can see the embedded system? So let me give the quick overview on the embedded system. You may know that what is a computer, laptop, or a servers. All these are the standalone devices. So these are uh, devices are using for various applications like storing the data and processing the data like transmission, then to remote connection, we'll be using the servers. 
So embedded is nothing but a mini computer, we can say. So this is a mini computer, which will be going inside into the large system. So that is nothing but an embedded system. You may see that embedded system is there when you wake up in the morning, whatever the surrounding gadgets you are seeing, all these gadgets are coming up with the embedded system. So like if you take a smart, uh, smart TV, or if you take a refrigerator, or if you take a washing machine, or you take a microwave, and all these devices will be having, like what I can say, consumer electronics, military applications, aerospace applications. There are wide applications will be using the immediate system. What is basically, if I give the general definition of the embedded system is the thing that it is a mini computer which is going inside into the large computer. Let us take an uh, nowadays automobile industry where we are looking at the cars with the attractive features, correct? Like automatic uh, screen, open screen, and then if you're not putting your seat belt, it is indicating to put the seat belt for the safety side. And when you met with the accident, so automatically airbags will be open. There are so many uh, things you can do through the embedded. So that will be based on paying the more amount you will get the what uh, high speed, uh, I mean, more attractive features uh, uh, into the any system. Okay. So, like you can see, this embedded system is nothing but it is nothing but deals with the computers that are fixed inside the complex equipment. So, so that small mini computer is putting into the large complex system is nothing but an embedded system. So like where we will be using this embedded system is, this embedded system are used in the medical devices. Okay. You may see that uh, scanning, different the scanning uh, devices will be using the embedded system. Uh, if you take a plane uh, to navigating, to controlling, to signaling, uh, for radar applications, we'll be using the embedded system. I said that this will be using in the cars, rackets, microwave oven, 3D printers, scanners, you know, wide applications. When you wake up and see surrounding all the gadgets, as, as with the mini computer in the complex uh, device, so that basically we call it as an embedded system. It may be any single operation or multiple operation, so we'll be using the embedded system. Now, recently, you may see that there is a one more area is emerging. That area is nothing but Internet of Things, where standalone, if your laptop or if your desktop computer or a server is not connecting to the Internet, you can't able to do much work, right? You can't do much work. You can't gather more information without connecting into the Internet, where your standalone devices are connecting into the Internet to exploring more information. Okay. In the similarly, if you way back to 10 or 20 years back, where our embedded system is not connecting through the internet, there is no interfacing between embedded system to the internet. Now, whatever the embedded system we are looking at, advanced embedded devices or boards, which are coming with the network connectivity facilities, where you can connect your embedded system into the what internet. So that is the evolution of the internet of things. A new emerging area where all computers, embedded systems, standalone computes are connected through the internet to perform the various tasks, which are outerwise we have a difficult to uh, do manually. So these are the three courses we'll be providing. So our main uh, centric uh, concentration on embedded system and internet of things. So let us give uh, the training overview, how the training will be going on, okay? So so VLSI Guru Institute offers, uh, maybe this will slightly varies according to the classes and the hands-on experience. Uh, it is a tentative uh, duration for training. It will be 16 weeks or 100 hours. Uh, it will slightly varies uh, based upon the classes and the hands-on experience project what we are doing. Uh, you can take assuming as this is a tentative uh, schedule. So we are covering the important aspects of the embedded and what software is required to do the embedded uh, systems and IoT. Uh, throughout this course, uh, we'll be giving the lectures. So in the lectures means we'll be teaching you the theory aspects. Also, we'll be doing on uh, uh, practical hands-on experience through the lectures. 
and we'll be doing the technical discussion. So whatever the doubts, any any doubts are there, we'll be putting on technical discussions during the uh, lectures. Okay, and then we'll be giving some of the hands and experience. Uh, we'll be giving a uh, few projects. Could you what could you able to do? Those will be giving or uh, will be giving an hands on experience, and we will providing the weekly assignments. Okay, so small scale uh, weekly assignment we will be providing you, and we'll we'll give the large scale projects after uh, gone through one of the processor. We'll be giving the projects, and we'll be uh, arranging the mock interviews before you are attending the final interview to the recruiters. Okay, so basically the mock interviews will be you can willing to come to the institute. We'll be doing in offline. Or if you're willing to take online, you will do the online mock interviews. So, and then we'll be doing the model test. Each uh, topic, if you cover like C programming and then some microcontroller like board, we are completing. So, we'll be conducting the test. Uh, test may be the objective test or it may be the descriptive test. So, we'll be conducting the test. So, this is the flow how we are going through complete course. In lectures, we'll be doing the three. We'll providing the details about the board and then we'll do the technical discussions then we'll do the hands on experience of the project weekly assignment will give and projects mock interviews and model test so today agenda my agenda will be i'll be uh, discussing about what is the main objective of this course what you are going to study in this course and uh, who should attend this course who should take this course and i'll be talking about uh, uh top level of what is embedded system and what is the internet of things and we'll see what is the future of embedded system and then what are the main components of the embedded system and how an embedded system is developed and then what is the architecture of the embedded system and then what are the embedded system uh, tools so we'll be discussing about like a uh, few details about what is sensor what is architectures how this will be integrated with the board and what is a, like embedded system and IoT? Then we'll be I'll be discussing about what is the course we are covering to uh, covering for this subject, and then what is the job opportunity after completion of the course, uh, post course completion support. What kind of support we are providing you after completion of the course? This is the agenda of today's my presentation. Now, if we look at my primary objective of this course, so we'll be giving the sound knowledge on the embedded system and the IOT. So we'll understand what are the components of the IOT, how uh, embedded system, how embedded system can be built, and we'll develop a knowledge and skills needed to build the embedded system softwares, what softwares we're using for uh, to build the embedded system. And we'll be developing the skills to understand how sensors, what types of sensors we are working for the different applications and what type of operators we can use for our system. Are a board, and then we will be providing your sound knowledge and C program. Where, where all the most of the boards, what we are working on, we are writing a code in the embedded C. So we will be giving the strong foundation of the C. If you know, if you are able to learn the C programming and learning other programming, is not a difficult task. For core uh, language, is nothing but C. If you know that what is the data types, what is the operators, what is the uh like functions how to define the functions and then uh like how to write the regular expressions many things are there in programming language if you know how to do this in the c programming like understanding the higher level languages like python and uh, java programming is not a difficult task okay so we will be giving the sound knowledge and c and the good programming so that student can use based on develop the any other programming languages as i said higher level languages like Python and other programming languages needed for the embedded system. So this is my primary objective of this course. Now, who are the target audience? Who, who can take this course? Uh, like student uh, who's doing master level courses and who are pursuing uh, final year, okay? Fresh, fresh graduate with engineering background, they can take up this course. And then uh, employed software and hardware professional seeking their career in uh, opportunity in the embedded system they can go for they can take up this course and uh, like faculty and staff from the engineering and scientific institutions who are interested in embedded system they can take up this course so this is called the target who can take up the course now let us go with uh, what is the embedded system 
So can you tell me with your definition, what is the embedded system? So I did a quick introduction about the embedded system, right? What is the embedded system? It is a system or a mini computer, which is going inside into the complex, complex devices. Correct. So you can take an, uh, let us take an uh, drone. So drone will be having an embedded system. So many computer that will be going inside. This computer is not to do the job what our traditional computers are doing. Correct. The job of this computer may be the different. Okay. Don't uh, like uh, the computers, laptop and servers are not embedded systems. Where the system or a uh, computer, which is going inside into the any logged system, that we call it as a embedded. So this mini computer is integrated with the, the large complex system. So that's why we call embedded. Embedded means attaching, attaching to the system. So they like what is the embedded system is when a computer becomes a part of the another large system. So when the small computer became a part of the another large system, so we can call that is nothing but an embedded system. So when computer becomes one of the component of the system, we may also call it as what embedded computer or we call it as a embedded systems like laptops, desktop and servers are not became a embedded computer. Any computer which is going inside, which will be integrated with the any complex system that we call it as an embedded system. So like where you can do this computer are fixed into where these computers are fixed inside. As I said, it is used in automobiles like cars, planes, correct? And then it is used in microwave events to control the uh, operation. Like I want to put uh, turn on the uh, heat. I want to generate the heat for the 10 seconds or 20 seconds. That will be controlled by the embedded system. So it is used in smart watches where you can track your number of ste steps of walking, then uh, orbit sensor, like BB measure. All is done with the embedded and it is used in smartphones. It is used in robotics to controlling the arms of the robots. It is used in the drones, smartphones, manufacturing equipments. It is used in washing machine, fridges, digital camera, aeronautics. There are wide applications of the embedded system. You got the point, what is the embedded system? So it is a small computer or a computer. It is an integral part of the large complex system. We call it as a embedded system. So these are the applications where you can find all the embedded systems. Now, what is IoT? What is the Internet of Things? What is the Internet of Things? What is mean by Internet of Things? Uh, like, let us take on one example uh, to understanding uh, general definition of what is mean by IoT, Internet of Things. Uh, way back to 10, 20 years back, where where are the embedded systems were there? Those embedded system is not constantly connecting into what servers or a network. Okay. Nowadays you can see. Suppose uh, I'm going for the long drive. Uh, there is a, a problem in my car, like ignition problem or some sort of uh, uh, car problems, where I'm going to continuously monitoring that. Continuously monitoring that. So if there is any fault in this uh, my car, so that continuously monitoring data will be keep uh, transmitting to the internet. Suppose there is a problem with my car, I stuck with my car. This whatever the problem is occurring in my car will be reported using embedded system that will be connecting through internet that will be sending to the nearby service station. Did you understand? So earlier only embedded system was there, standalone embedded system. Now the embedded system is coming with what connecting into the IoT Internet of Things. One such cases means suppose I, I my car is you know, uh, met with some accident. Let us take or it may be uh, yeah, some faults in the car. I'll be figuring out that fault. Then I'll be tracking the location by using the GPS. The GPS location will be shared into the nearby service station, so that I am not going to uh, read about. Uh, when I will when the uh, service uh, people will come, all these things, manual things I can remove, correct? So that, so this can be automatically generated by using embedded and the IoT. Did you understand? So what is mean by IoT is the thing that our embedded is connecting to the internet, is becomes a internet of things. 
So this is a one case where uh, you can use the IoT. Let us take a next case. So this is a case, uh, other use case of the embedded with the IoT. Suppose you are met with the accident, okay? Uh, you don't have a position to give a call to the police or give a call to the uh, a, like a service station or a hospital. Once you met with the accident, that immediate system will, okay, uh, recording all the data. So then GPS will track the location. So then it is going to sending a message to the nearby police station and nearby uh, service station and nearby the hospitals. Therefore, this they will come and they can start rescuing you. So this this thing nowadays or in upcoming you will be going to see all these kind of uh, immediate systems in your automobiles. Currently it is not there in like in if you go US and advanced like uh, uh, US and DAL, uh, fast growing countries where you can see the cars with all these facilities. If they met with the accident, so it will automatically constantly generating the data. That data will be sharing to the police station then then it is sharing to what service station then it is sharing to the hospital to rescue this is how connecting into the internet of things so this is a second use case of the internet of things now what 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 is the relationship between iot and embedded system what is the relationship between iot and embedded system So where embedded system is interconnecting with the internet, so that is a relation. Like how you can use this relation. Suppose I want to use the embedded system with IoT. Let us take this only as an example. So IoT device, internet connected devices. Let us take how it is giving the relationship between bank to the car. How it is giving a relationship between bank to the car. Suppose uh, you are buying a car, correct? You will be uh, pay for the insurance, correct? You are a good driver and you are not met with the accident for the throughout the one year. So what this embedded system will do means it will constantly connecting, uh, collecting all your data. You don't understand. So how you are, how safely you are riding, at what rate you are, what speed you are riding. Okay, what is the chances of met with the accident? Uh, by generating few data, this bank people will understand. So, are you a safety driver? And you know, what is a premier I can give for you? Correct. So, all this data can be connected from the embedded system that will be shared to what? Bank, to the Internet of Things. They can take the data and analyze who is a good driver, who is a rash driver, you know, who is maintaining the car. Based upon that, they can decide what premier insurance they can give to the customer. You don't understand how it is giving relationship between bank to the car. You got the point what I'm saying. Uh, let us see that how it is uh, you know, giving hospital and health care. So where, uh, suppose, patients is staying in the hospital, I can't able to see uh, their uh, who's a take care or people are not able to stay in hospital. Suppose they're staying outside. They want to constantly see the health monitoring operation. They can go with this embedded with IoT. Is it correct? So these are the areas where you can use the embedded system along with the IoT. Then home-based devices, automobiles, airlines and aeronautics, hospitals and healthcare units, and space and defense units, then manufacturing units, banks and insurance companies. So like one example, I said, what is the relationship between the bank and the car? So you will be keep tracking the data of one year, like how, what is the, uh, what speed is running a car? Now he is maintaining the car based upon the data collection. You will do the data analysis. Then you will be giving the what is the term insurance for the particular customer. You don't understand how everything you can see the problem where the problem manual problem you can try to push into what embedded with the automation. Automation. You know I can make this to automation rig. So by adopting the embedded system with the Internet of Things. So this is how the relationship between embedded system with the IoT. So day by day computers are evolving. The same with the embedded system too. All this embedded system is a make a big impact on the society. So you may see that nowadays uh, street lights are automatically turn on and turn off. 
uh, based upon the motion, uh, motion uh, sensing of the human motion based upon that particular street lights will be blowing on and blowing off. Basically, that will done through an embedded system in the IoT. So this is the relationship between IoT and the embedded system. And what is you can see that what could be the future of the embedded system and IoT? So, so by expected current year 2023, so IoT is making a market uh, size of three trillions. Now you can see most of the devices, embedded devices, are pushing to, towards the IoT. So this information is gathered by this source, Gartner. So market spending will be size of three trillions on embedded and I would say this is the future of the embedded system. Now let us go with what are the key components of the embedded system. So this embedded system, I said that this is basically different from the traditional computers what we have, like a computer, laptop, or a uh, laptop or a server. So let me take any questions from the audience. Let me check. Okay, so let us see what are the key components of the embedded system. So there are three uh, key components of the embedded system. The components of the modern embedded system will be the hardware. So this hardware will be supplied by the embedded uh, suppliers. There are so many vendors are there who are going to supplying the embedded boards, uh, like the Textas instrument, uh, NXB semiconductors, Okay, and then Raspberry Pi support, Raspberry Pi boards are there. You may see about some of the open source boards are like Arduino boards. So those are the companies who is providing the hardware boards. For these boards, according to my specific application, I'm going to do, do the programming. So I'll do the software, means I'm developing a program for this embedded system. So if it is necessary, this will be connecting to our internet and we'll deploy this software into the board and that, that board will be integrated into the large complex system. So these are the main three uh, components of the modern embedded system is hardware, software, and then inter internet connectivity. So like how you can develop an embedded uh, system. So to develop the embedded system, what do you need? You need the hardware, right? And then you need the software, and then you need the connectivity. So, like uh, embedded hardware suppliers are like ST microcontrollers, uh, Broadcam, then Raspberry Pi Foundation, and then many are many uh, embedded uh, board supply uh, people are like Textas, I said Textas, then NXP uh, semiconductors like ARM, ARM based processors, they will supply. So, we'll use this uh, hardware, okay? So we will do what, what is the specific uh, application we want to build out of this embedded system. So we will build, for to build that, we will be develop a software for that. Then this software will be deployed into the hardware. And then if you want to continuously connect into the internet, we'll be connecting to the inter internet. Okay, you should be having basic idea about, and then internet connectivity also when you're working with IoT and the embedded system so then we'll deploy the software into the embedded board and then we'll start using that embedded board for the specific applications so these are how you can develop the complete embedded system now let us see that what is the main architecture of the embedded system so if you look at the computer so the architecture of the uh, embedded system is uh, slightly varies comparing to the tra traditional uh, computer system. So in embedded uh, system architecture, so we'll be having a CPU, central processing unit, with the primary memory with the RAM. So like in uh, traditional computers, uh, we'll be having a, a ROM, is a built-in ROM is there. So we don't, we'll be having a, a built-in ROM. So we'll be using like secondary memory as a memory chip with the different uh, GB size, 16 GB, 32 GB, etc. And if you look at your computer, or what are the inputs to the computer is? To take a laptop, what are the inputs to the computer you can connect? Keyboard is the one input, then mouse is the one input, 
and then what are the outputs of the computer will be like monitor then printers are the output now look at this uh, embedded system along with this these are the keyboard and uh, mouse will be the optional to the embedded system so along with this what are the inputs you can connect these sensors like uh, temperature monitoring sensor then uh, after moisture the sensor various sensor we will be working on so these are be connecting into the cpu so so where keyboard and the mouse will be the optional to the embedded system so other inputs to the embedded system is like sensors and then keyboard and the mouse will be optional so these are various sensors we are connecting into the cpu so this sensor will generate the data okay so it will uh, like working as a like a converter one form of energy is converted into electrical energy where this electrical energy will be feeding into the cpu so we'll do the various processing on that uh, input uh, whatever the input we are getting from the sensor we'll do the processing so that will be giving as a output so what are the output of this uh, embedded system is nothing but a uh, actuators the like actuators is electromagnetic relays then uh, led uh, touch led screen like uh, motors stepper motor servo motors so these are the outputs of the embedded system sir, sorry to interrupt. yeah yes hello um, sir yeah sir what is the actual difference between this computer laptop and an embedded system because in the diagram in the uh, ppt last present uh, slide what i saw was okay. everything was input and output even with the same as no, 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 the, what our computers and laptop have like keyboard is a input mouse is a input hmm. same as right. like temperature sensor is an input so uh, what? so so what, what is the, the difference actually okay okay what is the difference between the traditional computer and the embedded system is nothing but traditional computer will be having two inputs what are the inputs to the traditional computer is one is keyboard another one is mouse what are the outputs of the traditional computer monitor is the one output then you can connect to the printer printer is the one output to the traditional computer how this is slightly different from the embedded system is slightly different from the traditional computer is this embedded system can be connecting into the sensors you can see here these are the sensors you don't understand like various okay, sensor okay. temperature okay. monitor sensor and then moisture sensors various sensors will be connecting okay so this will be connecting to the cpu we here we'll do the software programming according to our programming uh, it will take the signal from the sensor it will do the specific application that will be giving as an output so these are the outputs to your embedded system what are the outputs is nothing but actuators like electromagnetic relays then touch screen lcd and then uh, electric motors like a uh, stepper motor or servo motors these are the outputs of the embedded system this is how embedded system is different from the what traditional computers you got the point now okay. yes so, yes i got it uh, along it's like a more yeah, yeah go ahead general purpose computers and application oriented computers oriented general right, purpose yeah. computers versus uh, traditional okay, computers okay. is nothing but a computers general purpose computer application oriented computers you can say the embedded system correct you can do various okay. applications yeah. using this embedded system along with the cpu uh, the embedded cpu will be having the sum of the ports okay so what are the ports is nothing but we can call general purpose inputs and outputs general purpose inputs and outputs so these ports may be working as input this more port you can use it as a output for interfacing communication like uh, how you are interfacing uh, through the computer means you'll be connecting the usb right usb and hd mi cable where how you can interface in the different uh, uh, communication how you can uh, different uh, interfacing communication you can do means basically interfacing between your embedded system to other hardware you can go with the general purpose input and output where they will be using the different protocols like we'll be using spi protocol okay i2c protocol then uart uart then we'll be using can connection area network these are the some of the communication 
interface protocols we'll be using in the embedded system to do the various uh, interfacing operations. So this is a like a architecture of the embedded system, and then this embedded system will be connecting into what to the internet. So network interface will be there for the embedded systems. So this is the overall architecture of the embedded system. Now we'll see what is the software development uh, uh, for developing the embedded system. The software development tools uh, to developing the embedded system is, so we need a compiler, we need a assembler, we need a debugger, we need a simulator, and we need an interpreters. So these are widely we are using. So to run any uh, high level programming languages, what do you need? Suppose you if you want to run the C programming, so what do we need? So what do you need when you, you want to run the C programming? So you need a uh, interpreter, right? As I said, uh, Python is, I mean, high level languages, one example is Python. Python is an interpreter language. Uh, to compile that, we need the interpreters. So if you want to develop a software, tool for the embedded system will be using the compilers. What is the use of the compiler? Compiling the entire code into the machine language. So machine language will take what binary format. Okay. So we need a compiler. So we need assembler. Assembler are used to converting from assembly language into the machine languages. Where debugger is used to checking the checkpoints and breakpoints. And before putting any code into the uh, actual hardware, deploying into the actual hardware will be going with the debugging. We are debugging the system basically to avoid to avoiding to give the wrong signal to the board. If you give the wrong signal to the, your embedded system, what will happen? Fault may occur. It will break electrical uh, charge circuit will happen, then it will not functioning properly. To before deploying into the software into the board, we will be debugging. We'll check the, we'll using checkpoints or the breakpoints or the, using this we'll debug the code and uh, we'll be using the simulator. What is the use of simulator? What is the simulator? Simulator is also to check before going into the hardware operation, actual hardware operation. So we'll be checking through the uh, sensor simulator. Suppose I want to check each sensor operation uh, Instead of real time, I want to check through the software. All these uh, sensors are working properly or not. Uh, they're working operation with the tool. I can go with the sensor uh, simulator. And you know that the interpreter is to converting the code from line by line into interpreting, and it will be converted into the code, mission code. So these are the tools uh, are required to developing a software in the embedded system. So what is this test bench is nothing but once you use the hardware for the hardware, you will develop a code and then you debugging, compiling, everything will do. Then you will be deploying into the hardware. Before deploying, you will be testing the code uh, using simulators. So once your program is correct, then you will be dumping into the, deploying into the hardware. So these are the software development tools are required to develop a embedded software. Did you understand? Now, so this is one another example how basically uh, you can uh, use embedded system with the what? Internet. So swiping card, correct? The swiping card will be having a uh, small uh, SIM, SIM card will be there. So when you swipe, so it will generating the data according to your how much you need to pay. And then that will be directly connecting to your bank server where it is updating all the details, correct? Right? How much it is detected, how much it is added, okay, what you are spending for, what are the amount you are spending, all details will be updated into the bank server. So that this is one example where you can use the embedded with the internet, okay? And uh, so what is the knowledge is required to designing an embedded system, okay? So what about the hardware knowledge? What level of hardware knowledge I need to designing any embedded system? 
So basically, you should have uh, knowledge and understanding about what hardware boards. What are the board you are using? There are, I said, embedded system, embedded supplier. There are various vendors are there. You should have brief basic knowledge about the hardware board and uh, what is the processor, means what is a central processing unit, what is a memory map operation, what are the ports, means what are the general purpose input output ports. So this is enough to start with the embedded system. So you don't need uh, uh, knowledge of chip level design of the board. All you need that uh, what is the hardware, what kind of hardware we are using, what is the memory uh, map, and then what processor and how many ports are there. This idea is required to design in the software, I mean embedded system. You don't require the knowledge on the complete chip design of the system. So this is the knowledge is required to develop a embedded system. Now let us go with, so what basically we'll be giving throughout this training is, uh, let us display the syllabus, the course syllabus, what we'll be dealing with the, in this course. Uh, first, we will be giving the over, overview of the embedded system, what the embedded system will be uh, discussing overview of the embedded system. And then we'll be just uh, refreshing, already you studied about the analog system and digital systems. So we'll be refreshing that analog and digital systems. Then we'll be going with the order of the architectures of the embedded and uh, desktop based systems. And we'll be giving the foundation about the operating system like Windows operating system and uh, Linux operating system. Some of the boards are working on Linux platforms. Okay, if you take Raspberry Pi and uh, Beagle board black, so those are the boards which are working on the Linux platform. So we'll be giving the basic introductory about the different Linux distros we call, like CentOS, then Ubuntu, uh, Red Hat. So we'll be giving the basic idea about different operating system, Linux platform operating system, along with that Windows operating system. We'll be giving the foundation and we'll be giving the basics about what is a compiler, what is the assembler, what is the interpreters, so what is a debugger, what debugger we are using, uh, how to use this. So we'll be teaching here. And then after that, so we'll be teaching you how to write a C programming, then how to compile, and then how to write a embedded code, embedded C to the board. So we'll be teaching that. Then we'll be giving the strong foundation of the C programming language because, so we'll be using ARM M3, M3 processor, so which works on embedded C. So we'll be teaching you strong C programming foundations, and then data structures in C and then its applications. And then we'll give some of the case studies on C and C++ programming. Then we'll introduce the object-oriented programming and C++. There we'll teach you what is inheritance, what is polymer, polymorphism. Okay, so we'll be teaching those concepts in OOPS, object-oriented uh, programming. Then we'll be teaching you protocols. What, what are the protocols are using for the communication like SPA protocol, I2C protocol, how to use the UART, how to use the CAT with the peripherals, how you can interface with the peripherals, we'll be teaching you. Then I said that our embedded system, what are the inputs to the embedded system is nothing but a sensors. What are the outputs of the embedded system is nothing but a actuators. So we'll be dealing various sensors for the specific application. And then we'll be using the Activators. Then we'll be teaching you how you can interfacing your embedded board with the network, computer network. Uh, and then we'll be interfacing the embedded system with the sensors and the actuators. So we'll be giving foundation about what is the ARM processor based upon the ARM Cortex M series for one board. So we'll be working on LPC 1313. For this board, these are the essential requirements. Okay, so after teaching you this board, we'll be going with uh, some of the advanced boards. We'll be going with the Beagle, Beagle Black Board, Beagle Blackbone Board. So for this, we'll be writing the code program using Python. Using Python. So we'll be introducing the basics about the Python, uh, like what are the operators, data structures, then strings, and then uh, conditional statements. So those things we'll be teaching in the Python. Then we'll be teaching you how to write a code, okay? A Python code for the Beagle Board Black. And also this Python will be using for Raspberry Pi also. 
Raspberry Pi also. So Raspberry Pi also works on Python programming. We'll teach you Python with the Raspberry Pi board. So this is what we'll be covering. There's a course over you, syllabus to covering for the boards, different boards. So like if you can see, these are the different boards. So this is the first one you can see. This is nothing but uh, ARM based board. Okay. And second one is a Beagle board. And the third one is the Raspberry Pi board. So we are, we'll be working on this. This is our embedded system, correct? This is our embedded system. We'll be understanding how this embedded system will be used in one of the integral part of your large complex system. Using this, what are the applications you can design, specific applications you can design, we will be teaching you throughout this course. You don't understand. So to know the knowledge, what is the knowledge is required to developing the embedded system, you should know what is the processor, what is a CPU, correct? What is a memory map? What are the ports? You don't require how to design in this IC. Chip level knowledge is not required. You should have knowledge about what is a processor, memory, ports, etc. Okay, these are the boards we are working on. And also we'll be teaching you some of the ARM processor fundamentals. So we'll be teaching you basic components of the ARM processor and we'll be giving the differences between various ARM ports like A series, R series, and M series processor. And we'll be programming the overview of the Cortex M3, which is widely used in embedded system. So memory, what is the memory model of M3, uh, Cortex M3 processor? So we'll be teaching you what is the instruction set of the Cortex, and we'll be doing hands on ARM processor and comparison of some of the series like uh, Cortex M4 and M, uh, Cortex A53. And we'll be giving the architecture of embedded uh, computer design using ARM based CPU. So this is what we'll be giving the ARM processor foundations. Okay. And uh, what could be the job opportunity? Uh, see, nowadays there is a phenomenal growth in IoT and in embedded area. So about uh, 9 million will be invested in the year 2023 on uh, embedded and IoT, almost all. Uh, traditional embedded system, stand alone embedded system, what we are seeing will be pushing towards to the connecting to the internet of things. So this is a source is generated, uh, taken from this URL. You can go through this URL. So these are the job opportunities. Like if you take a healthcare, uh, healthcare domain or a retail domain or agriculture domain. So various domain will be start adopting the embedded system with the internet of things. So what could be after completion of the course? What is, what is the support we are giving? Yeah, hello. Yes, hello. So there is a question from the participant. Can you go ahead, hello? So any questions from the participant, online student? You can unmute your microphone and you can ask me or you can put it in the chat box. Hello, sir. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Uh, sir, just now you have said that there are different types of boards you are using. Correct. Yeah. Like a Raspberry, yeah. Raspberry Pi, Beagle Bone. Beagle Bone, correct. Beagle Bone, yes. Yeah. Can you please make difference of those boards? What are the difference of? So basically, this uh, ARM-based ARM based, ARM based processor works on embedded C. Okay. So the applications will be the, if you look at the application wise, all boards are, will be using for the same application. Okay. Different, different specific, uh, specific application. So this ARM boards are works on embedded C and this Beagle, Bone and uh, Raspberry Pi works on uh, Linux, Linux uh, OS with the Python program, Python program. So this is, I can say some of the, in terms of uh, operating system, in terms of programming language. So this is the main uh, uh, differences between ARM based uh, boards and the, uh, like Beagle board and Raspberry Pi works on Linux with the Python program. Got the point? Sir, 
can you repeat again can you repeat again yeah arm boards also will work on python uh, linux os or uh, in windows os yeah, yeah it will be yeah yeah, yeah. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. this also you can work on windows operating system and linux operating system also so most of the time we teach you this is windows operating system And then we will be and using the Heal software. Heal software. One of the ID we are using to write the program is we will be using the Heal ID. Heal ID. To write the program and compile and then and then deploy the code into the hardware. Hardware. So we will be using the Heal ID. Integrated development and work. Development and work. Okay. 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 Ok
data what is inherited is polymorphism encapsulation those details will be covered in this series okay sir uh, we have to program the programs uh, in the linux os sir i am not getting your point clearly can you repeat again the program is the programming skills are taught uh, in the linux os sir uh, for our we will by ARM using ARM by using the linux os yeah for this uh, arm m3 lpc 1313 will be using windows windows okay, okay. for this uh, beagle backbone and raspberry pi and raspberry pi linux linux uh, we have to write the you will teach uh, writing programs using linux os yes, 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 python yes, 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 correct 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 uh, we can also uh, you will also teach uh, how to write a c programs on the linux os sir and the compile the c programs no, no, no. c programming you can write write it and you can uh, compile using windows as well as linux we will teach you no problem we will teach you how to compile the c uh, c program in linux operating system also we will teach you. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. So, other parts, other parts, questions. Yeah, you can go through our website for uh, codes. Okay. You can see this is a syllabus. We'll be covering C programming, C data structures, microprocessor, and microcontrollers. And then what is a Linux uh, internal, like what is a Linux operating system, what commands, Linux basic commands, then uh, detail about the C++. So if we go with C programming, these are what we'll be covering. You, you can refer the website to see what are the topics we'll be covering in the C, C++, microcontrollers, et cetera. Any queries, uh, if you have, you can please go ahead. You can talk to me or you can uh, drop a message in the chat box. Hello, sir. Yeah, hello, Madhya. Yeah, hello, Madhya. Uh, sir, you will also teach uh, how to, uh, regarding assembly programming? Uh, basically, we will not teach you assembly programming. So we will teach you how to after understanding of the C programming, we'll teach you how to write the embedded C program. Okay, then we'll teach you compiler, how compiler is basically uh, compiler and assembler are used to converting the embedded C into the assembly level language. Okay, we'll not going to teach you how to write the assembly language. We'll teach you how to write the embedded C program. Okay, sir. Any questions from the online and uh, offline students? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll be teaching you Ubuntu. So, which are the compatible operating system for the different different ports? Beagle board is working on Ubuntu also. We'll be teaching you Ubuntu, like how to install Linux virtual uh, Linux box. So, we'll be teaching you. If you are already having the Ubuntu operating system, there is no problem. In that case, uh, we are asking you to do the virtual Linux operating system. That steps will guide you, no, don't worry. Hello, sir. Yeah, mother. Yeah, mother. Uh, sir, can you please explain what are the projects covered uh, in this? Yeah. Uh, see from the LPC one three one three will be uh, covering you uh, like a touch pad, then we'll be uh, covering you. How to interfacing the LCD, then how to configuring the ARM I2C, 
I2C and SPI protocol, and then CAN based pro protocol. And then we'll be uh, teaching you how to write a program for light monitoring system in the cars. And then uh, basic uh, serial peripheral interface SPI protocol. So these are the topic we'll be covering uh, in the LBC 1313. And same thing we'll be covering in like Google board and then uh, Raspberry Pi. Along with the traditional programming, uh, we'll be doing in the Beagle board under Raspberry Pi. So, our idea of this complete course will be you should have good foundation about writing the embedded C programming, one thing. And after writing the embedded C, how you can deploy it into the board for the specific requirement uh, with the different boards, ARM based board, Beagle board, and the Raspberry Pi. So eventually, once you acquire the knowledge on all these three boards, if you go to the industry and if you see any other embedded board, you will be able to catch up and then do the programming on respective boards. That overall idea will be given throughout this course. Okay. Now let me demonstrate you one program. Okay. Uh, on LPC one three one three. So. There are like ARM, there are different different uh, uh, boards are there. So if you talk about ARM M3 series there, there are M4 series are there. There is a slight variation of one board to another board. Each board will be uh, uh, specifically using for some of the applications. 2129, uh, I'm not sure, but it, it should be. LPC 1313. So this is latest one, what we are using it. Correct. There are different series are there. Uh, two, huh? I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that processor. Uh, 2148. I, I need to check that. Now let us uh, demonstrate you one program we did on uh, LPC 1313. Uh, for this, we are using ID is a Kiel Micro version 4. Okay. This is a Kiel Micro version 4. Let me open this. This is what program we did for uh, touch, uh, keypad touch, key touch. Okay. But I'm not interfacing uh, this, my, uh, this program with the hardware. Just I'm going to show you the simulated outputs. Okay. So this is a program we wrote in the what language it is. This is in C language. So we are did, did with the C language. This is what we'll teach you embedded C program. Okay. Uh, for I'm using in this case, I'm using the port uh, 1.4. For that 1.4, first I need to use the system uh, uh, AHB clock controller that I need to enable this pin. That means icon pin. For this, I'm using this, enabling this. Okay. Then uh, I'm to selecting the function, I'm using this one for the icon port uh, 1.4. Then I'm to enable in the mode, I'm using this function. We'll teach you how to develop this kind of code. Okay. Now I'm writing the while loop and I'm putting the direction and I'm writing the while loop. If I touch the key, now it should be light to glow on. Okay. If, I, if I'm not touching, it will be off. So this is what the program, small program I'm talking about regarding a touchpad for the LPC 1313. So after writing the program, we need to compile and build it. Compile. Now I'm going to build this program. Now I'm getting zero errors and zero warnings for this. Now I'm going to debug this. So our my program size should be less than 32k. We'll see all these details. Why it should be less than 32k? More details about when you are start writing the program. So now you can see now I run this program. Now I debug this. Now I'm going to touch uh, use simulator. Uh, to check whether if I'm touching, it should be touch key touch and uh, not key touch. Uh, I'm using the peripherals. In this general purpose input output, I'm using the port 1.4. I'll be going to the port, this port 1.4. So this is a port 0, port 1, port 2, and uh, port 3. 1, 2, sorry, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm using this port. Now if I touch this, this key will touch open here. You can see the observed output here. So this is how it will be working as key not touch and key touch program. So like we will be interfacing this program, we'll deploy this program into the hardware. 
LPC 1313, then we'll, you can see the real time operation of that. Key touch or key not touch. Okay. Yeah, any questions out there you can ask me. Yeah, so Python prospect queue will be teaching basics. Oh, what is a Python? What are the ideas are we using to run the Python? Okay. And starting from print and input function, and we'll teach you data types, operators, control structures. Okay. And then we'll be teaching you um, functions. What is a function in Python? Uh, we'll be not teaching you more about uh, oops concept in Python. Up to function lambda parameter, we'll be teaching you Python. Using the foundation, we'll be understanding how to import in the libraries, necessary libraries to work with the uh, Beagle Bone, uh, Blackboard, and Raspberry Pi. What are the necessary libraries are there? How to import in that? Then how to enable in the particular general input output pins? What kind of uh, Python programming we are writing? Those things we'll teach you using Python. From Python basics to functions, we'll teach. What is the difference is C is nothing but low level language programming. So this is, we call it the compiler programming. So entire code will be compiled and then that will be converted into the mission code in C language. So these are the languages that used to build. Python will build using C program, low level languages. Where Python is the interpreted language, we can say. So it is high level language. So line by line execution will be there. Line by line it is converting into the mission code. So, because uh, Python is a vast libraries are available in Python. So, over uh, uh, 3 lakhs of libraries are available. You can see so many, nowadays, uh, so many applications uh, will be using, preferring the Python program. Yeah, from the basics, we'll start teaching uh, Python basics like input and print function. I said no data types, operators. Uh, then we'll be teaching you control structures, how to write the for loop, while loop, if statement. Then we'll be teaching you function, how to define the function in the Python. Okay. Then we'll be teaching you Python lambda parameter and also file handling operation also we'll teach you in the Python. So use this is what this is using this will teach you how to write the program for the Beagle Bone Blackboard and then Raspberry Pi using this foundation. Uh, sir, uh, what about IoT projects? Like, like IoT what project, are the project? Like we'll be doing one project on healthcare, one project on agriculture base, uh, one project on you know, bank sector. We'll be doing the projects uh, using IoT. Uh, so with the same components, what you showed is it? Yeah, using uh, using Beagle Bone. So IoT project. So usually we'll be doing with the Beagle Bone and the Raspberry. Okay, sir. Uh, so the Wi-Fi module, everything is uh, on the on chip, is it? Uh, in the Beagle Bone. Yes, yes, yes. Wi-Fi module okay. and then GPS module will be integrated in the Beagle Bone. Correct. Okay. Sir. So any questions, can go ahead. Yeah, Vaibo? Yeah, hello, Vaibo? Any other questions, you can go ahead of this course. In case no questions, we'll wind up this. Hello, sir. Uh, one second. One second. I'm I'm the offline student. Offline yeah. student. Yeah. I'll be coming to you. Coming to you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll be providing. We'll be providing. It has required. It has required. We'll be providing the certificate, certificate for intention and industrial projects. We'll be giving the additional certificate. No problem. No problem. 
Yes, Madan. Yes, Madan. Uh, yes, sir. Regarding that certification only, sir, you will provide uh, what are the projects we have done in the certification. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We will be providing you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. At the end of the course, we will be uh, 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 one of the main projects you have done for the industry. Uh, industry oriented uh, projects based upon that, we will provide you the certificate. Okay, sir. Sir, it is an uh, offline and online course, sir. Okay, regarding okay, the uh, mode of process, process. Uh, we have a three years of process. One mode is nothing but you can go ahead with the uh, uh, weekdays class. Week class. Every day you will be having a session. Two hours, uh, three sessions, and two hours of practical session. Hands-on experience. Hands experience. Hands if you opt to for the weekdays. Week 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 if you are opting for the weekends, you will be having sessions on Saturday and Sunday. Every day, four four hours will be there, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, one more mode of uh, uh, classes will be e-learning. So where we'll provide you the recorded session. Uh, you can go ahead with the recorded sessions. And any doubts are there, at the weekends, trainer will be connecting. OK? OK, sir. Hello, sir. One second. Hello. Yes, Madan. Hello. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, Madan. Hello, sir. Yeah, mother. Yeah, you are audible. You are audible. Go ahead. Yeah, regarding, regarding. Sir, when is the? Yeah, yeah. Regarding that, you know, our. Uh, we will say group manager want to address regarding the class start. When it will be start and regarding placement support. Uh, we want to address now. Now we will be going to address. Hello, uh, good afternoon. I am the manager of, sorry, good morning. I am the manager of VLSI Guru. I will be looking into the training and the placement. Throughout the training, I think uh, Chetan sir has provided all the technical details about what is embedded, where you will land up after doing the course and what projects you are going to do. Even he might, ha he has also provided the details about the tools, the software, even the hardware, right? For example, ARM, Cortex, even LPC, 1313. So these are the tools and the training he has walked you through all the content. The same thing as he has shown in the InSkill portal. See, basically this InSkill portal is majorly to track your performance and to provide you the access. Provide you the access to the recorded videos. For example, so suppose the training is starting from Monday. So the sessions will be 9.30 to 1.30. A live session will be happening offline candidates will be attending in the classroom whereas online candidates will be attending through the link that we have shared just like the demo session today also whatever the demo has been done it is has gone recorded in the background so what is our expectations when you come for the training our expectation is use attend the lecture learn the concepts 
clarify the doubts don't get involved into note down, noting down the things because once the session is done after a couple of hours the recorded video will be uploaded what is this unit session unit one unit two session one session two this is nothing but the live session so sessions will be for four hours remaining once the session is uh, session video is uploaded you can watch it 10 times and then you can make up the notes okay that is first thing now companies are come see vlsa guru is having to have it 70 plus companies that includes product base as well as service base for example samsung amd vipro hcl intel analog devices mediatek micron microchip multiple companies are there having to have with multiple companies we get a frequent requirement for embedded systems also so what we do is now when the trainer is delivering the content or the course topics concepts projects it is not possible for him to discuss all the interview questions so we have came up with a scenario where we have clubbed all the interview questions in the assignments so if a candidate after completion of the training if the candidate comes and says sir i am well prepared give me provide me the placement assistance then i am not sure how much he is prepared but if he comes and says that i had 70% completed the assignment at least 70% it means he is 100% completed the assignment now once he completed assignment it means he has completed the interview question most of the interview question that will be sufficient for me to provide him the placement assistance when it comes to the companies mostly there will be four rounds that is first one is the tech written test second is the hr round third is the technical discussion fourth is again the hr round where they will negotiate on the salary so when it comes to the written test see uh, the entire course curriculum is divided into two parts that is the language second is the project in the language itself we cover all the basic fundamentals of the embedded systems whether it is related to c or even the data structure and the basic that we are doing it is more than enough sufficient to clarify the uh, to clear the written test so if you are gone with the basics you are doing the assignments it means you can clear the written test hr discussion is the basic hr we will check the comms communications how your communication skills are there how you are interacting how you are how fluently you are speaking english and all for that purpose since we have five to six modules after completion of every module we conduct group discussions presentation which will develop your communication skills the third comes is technical discussion when it comes to a technical discussion one second yeah so when it comes to a technical discussion the team lead or the manager from the particular team will have a interaction with you where he will not discuss what basics are not he will just discuss what projects you have done what problems you faced in the projects consider a scenario he asks you that what problems you faced in the project and how you debug then person might say no sir i didn't face any problem everything goes smooth if you tell like this then he will create one scenario he will give you a problem statement and he will ask you to debug so now to give you the clarification about what kind of technical question based on projects are asked we will be conducting technical interviews after your assignment completions or after the project completion so and even the technical mock interviews will be conducted by the industry trainers so if you are able to clarify the technical interview it makes sure that project wise also you are strong and then we will support you in the placement and how is our placement support works criteria is the 70% assignments once you done with the 70% assignments we will add you into a job support group having tap with 70 plus companies as i said there are frequent requirements i will be keep posting the requirements in the group if you are okay with the terms and conditions for example if you are okay with the location some locations are in hyderabad some are in bangalore whichever comfort company you are comfortable whichever terms and conditions you are comfortable through that you can apply now the major thing is as three of you are having manual testing experience in even online candidates everyone has different profile it is not possible that all all of you are 2023 pass out and all of you are 65 percent so every profile is different what is the role of training institute the role of training institute 
is to provide the expertise to a fresher or someone who is new to this domain now when companies hire a candidate from a public portal they don't know anything for them it's a complete fresher but when they come to a training institute they know that the candidates referred from the training institute are already trained they have the tool expertise they have the project expertise so someone is supposed 2018 pass out 2017 2020 or even some other experience they have they will be focusing on what expertise you have gained and will you be okay to work on their projects okay means see there are two things one is a candidate with 2023 pass out having 80 percent it means he's eligible and he can work second is a candidate with 2016 pass out but also done the training what is the difference between them a candidate who is 2023 pass out with all the 80 percent he satisfies the criteria but if he doesn't have the expertise will the company hire company will hire if you don't have the expertise no because they are less bothered about the criteria they need the expertise because at the end expertise will make him work on the projects but if you are going through a training institute if you have the expertise we can recommend that you have a good expertise you can work on the project so through our reference or even recommendation they can consider because criteria is just for the protocol expertise is to make you work over there yeah so that's all that i just wanted to discuss now may i know any questions regarding the training mock interviews prakash madan bhargav am i audible yes sir and candidates and candidates yeah, madam, please tell me. Yeah, madam, please tell me. Uh, sir, can you please tell me when is the course is going to start? The course is going to start from Monday. Okay, sir. Thank you. Offline candidates, any queries? Mostly from Mostly 2018, from 2018 uh, companies, will, companies will, someone having someone beyond 2018, 2018, 2018, then we then have to we recommend have to recommend the reference we have to support. Oh, Hello, sir. Companies approach us that they have requirement. Do we have trained candidates? So, so you know, suppose, no, suppose there is a group of 10 people. Out of 10, 5 are performing. I can tell them that 5 are the performing candidates. This is the criteria. You can tell. So even I got even requirements from the company. For example, I got a candidate from CAP, requirement from the CAP Gemini. They were having 70% and all having 70% is difficult. So we told them that we have a candidate which are having very good expertise, but they will not satisfy a criteria of 70%. I can tell above 60, but they have done the projects very well in evaluation also their score is very good. So they, they considered those profiles and three people with a percentage of around 62 to 63 has also got hired. Any more doubts? Hello, sir. Yeah, just one second, yeah, just madam. One second, madam. Even if you are below yeah. below sixty, still it depends on how much expertise you are putting. Because for me to put a word, or even Mr. Shinivas to put a word, we will look into your performance. So there is nothing like if I am not satisfying the year of pass out or if you am not satisfying the percentage criteria still we have multiple options to recommend for example we you will be completing the training okay instead of training we can help you with the internship certificate and we can promote you as an internship so you can show that i have a internship experience and through that you can so it 
the support will be subjective as per the profile yeah yeah madan please tell me sir the placement support is uh, till uh, the candidate is placed huh? the placement support the placement is provided, provided till the candidate is candidate is i will tell you one example tell you example last year last year ultron was ultron occupied was by capgemini so there were candidates who got selected by ultron but they didn't get the offer letter because there was a merging going on between capgemini and ultron so for one and a half month they didn't get a offer letter not getting a offer letter indicates am i selected or not because they don't have any confirmation but within that one one month time i provided three to four opportunities one of the opportunity was samson so candidate applied for samson they cleared the interview got the offer letter they joined samson so i will not restrict you that you applied for this company now you cannot apply this one you will be in a whatsapp group till you are the, unless until you exit so because i will be posting some requirements for one year experience two years experience suppose today uh, you have done the you started the course six months you got placed after two years you are still in the group and you see one of the requirement in the product based companies with two years experience you can apply there is no stopping factor from the institute okay sir thank you yeah. sure so uh, what i will i will do is i am dropping my contact number okay so if you have any queries apart from this session also you can get back to us and we will provide you uh, all the details of whatever questions you have before the course commence so from tomorrow the course is starting the enrollments are open till thursday you can confirm your enrollment by paying 5k before thursday So by this, I will end the session over here. Thank you for attending.